The anatomy of the heart can seem quite complex, with loads of close anatomical relations, a number of large vessels draining into and out of it, its own unique blood supply, nerves, chambers, and much more. But in this short mini-series, we're going to make that anatomy super simple and break it down bit by bit. Today, we're going to start by looking at where the heart sits in the chest, the mediastinum. My name's Connor, and welcome to Anatomy 101. The mediastinum is the central part of the thorax and the part that contains the heart as well as many other important structures. It's bounded on either side by the pleural membranes of the lungs, inferiorly by the diaphragm and superiorly by the thoracic inlet. To make it easier to talk about, anatomists split the mediastinum into superior and inferior sections. The line dividing these two sections is a plane formed between the angle of the sternum, which is the part where the manubrium joins the body, and the bottom of the T4 vertebra. This line is commonly referred to as the plane of Louis. Anything above this is considered superior mediastinum, and anything below is inferior mediastinum. The inferior mediastinum can be further subdivided into three parts in relation to the heart. Anterior to the heart is the anterior mediastinum, where the heart sits is the middle mediastinum, and posterior to the heart is the posterior mediastinum. Let's take a closer look at these sections now and see what structures lie within them. We'll begin with the superior mediastinum, which is the most complicated one. All of the structures coming out the top of the heart first pass into the superior mediastinum. Starting with the arteries, we have the arch of the aorta, which curves through the lower part of the superior mediastinum, and from this comes the brachiocephalic artery, which branches to provide the right subclavian and left common carotid arteries. The other two branches of the aortic arch are also in the superior mediastinum. These are the left common carotid artery and the left subclavian artery. Now let's take a look at the veins. The two main veins draining into the superior vena cava are the left and right brachiocephalic veins. In the superior mediastinum, the left brachiocephalic vein receives blood from the left superior intercostal vein and the left and right supreme intercostal veins. Lastly, the part of the azygous vein that drains into the right brachiocephalic vein also sits in the superior mediastinum. There are two main pairs of nerves in the superior mediastinum, the left and right vagus nerves and the left and right phrenic nerves. Lastly, the top part of the esophagus and the trachea also both sit in the superior mediastinum. Okay, now we've covered the superior mediastinum, let's have a look at the anterior mediastinum. This is a relatively simple region in adults and basically only contains a bit of connective tissue. However, in young children, there's a small organ here called the thymus, which helps in the development of the immune system. Next, the middle mediastinum. This is the part of the thorax that contains the bifurcation of the trachea and the heart. Bear in mind that I've removed the pericardium here to help us orient ourselves. The only other significant structures to note here are the left and right phrenic nerves, which have continued their descent from the superior mediastinum. Lastly, let's look at the contents of the posterior mediastinum. The first structures to note here are the sympathetic trunks, which are nerve fibres that run down either side of the vertebral column. We also have the aforementioned azygous venous system, which sits just anterior to the vertebral bodies. The azygous vein receives blood in this region from the accessory hemiazygous and hemiazygous veins. In the posterior mediastinum, we also have the thoracic duct, which carries lymphatic fluid, and the thoracic aorta, which is a continuation of the aortic arch. Here I've just drawn the posterior intercostal arteries, which supply the posterior thoracic wall, but the thoracic aorta also produces a number of small branches to the bronchi, esophagus, and diaphragm. Finally in this region we have the esophagus, which travels all the way through the thorax on its way to the stomach. And there we go, that's the borders and contents of the mediastinum neatly summarised for you to learn from. We've got a whole mini-series coming up on the anatomy of the heart, so make sure to subscribe to the channel now so you don't miss out. I hope you learned something, and have a great day.